On Saturday 15th April 2023, Germany has shut down its last nuclear power plants. These three nuclear power plants are located in number 1 SR2 which is a nuclear power plant located in the town of Essenbach in Bavaria, Germany. It has a net capacity of 1410 megawatts. The second one is Neckarwestheim. It is a town in southwest Germany. This town has two nuclear power plants. One is of 840 megawatts and the other one has a net capacity of 1400 megawatts. And the third one is Emsland. It is a nuclear power plant located in the town of Lingen in Lower Saxony, Germany. This one has a net capacity of 1400 megawatts. So on Saturday 15th April before midnight, Germany turned off these three final nuclear reactors and they were disconnected from the respective electricity network. These three nuclear reactors contributed almost 6% of total Germany's energy. Now the important question is why did Germany do that? I'll explain everything in chronological order. The first thing that you have to understand is that Germany is one of the largest economies in the European Union and has a significant contribution to the European Union's GDP. And then you are also aware of the fact that Germany's economy is known for its strong industrial base and exports, particularly in the manufacturing and automotive sectors. On top of it, Germany is also the most populous country within the European Union, with an estimated population of around 83 million people. With all of this, it is obvious that Germany consumes more energy than any other European Union country simply because of its high industrial, transportation, residential and commercial sector requirements. Now with so much energy demand, why would a country switch off all its nuclear power plants? And not just nuclear power plants. With time going forward, Germany has also decided that they will shut down its coal, oil and gas powered thermal plants. Now due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict in 2022, Germany had to reactivate its coal fired power plants. Because as you know, natural gas used to come from Russia. Nord Stream pipelines were blown up by the United States and Germany had to end its dependency on Russian gas. That is the reason Germany had to reactivate its coal power plants to produce electricity. But then this is a temporary solution. But the ultimate plan of Germany is to end its dependency on fossil fuel once and for all. Of course, no country can do it all of a sudden. It has to be done in phases. The ultimate plan of Germany is to get 100% of its energy from renewable sources by 2035. That means now that the nuclear reactors in Germany are decommissioned in the future there may come a time when all oil gas and coal based thermal power plants will be phased out and decommissioned entirely Germany has made a policy around this it is called energy vende policy this policy is part of the renewable energy sources act which is a german legislation that was passed in the year 2000 with the objective of promoting the development and use of renewable energy sources in the country and the main sources of renewable energy that germany has been advocating for are solar and wind energy not just germany even the european union has a comprehensive policy framework and road map launched by the european commission in december 2019 called the european union green deal so you see there is a link between the european union green deal and germany's energy vende policy both initiatives share similar objectives in terms of promoting sustainability climate action and transition to a low carbon economy The German policy came much earlier than the European Union Green Deal but both the policy emphasizes the importance of renewable energy energy efficiency and sustainability in mitigating climate change and promoting a greener and more sustainable future The only difference is that the European Union Green Deal provides a broader framework for sustainability and climate action across all European Union member states and if you look at Germany's energy vende policy it specifically focuses on the country's energy transition As I've already said Germany is the largest energy consumer among all the member countries of the European Union which also directly means Germany is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases within the European Union. So if you see there is a dilemma on the one hand striving towards a cleaner and faster transition to renewable energy sources is a worthy goal. However it is important to acknowledge that this could potentially impact the current state of the economy. It is going to be difficult for a country to meet its high industrial, transportation, residential and commercial sector energy requirements. And always remember this, when the government aims to shift people, businesses or industries from one option to another, the government introduces regulations and imposes taxes to discourage the usage of option A. And at the same time, government will also introduce incentives or tax benefits to encourage the usage of option B. So if you see all these concerns about environmental pollution climate change etc is a global push towards renewable energy sources when i say global push it is primarily coming from the western countries that are north america and european union 
The green lobby is very active and strong in these countries. They are so strong that they even make the government listen to them. A couple of days back, you must have heard in the news that the G7 country heads, the group of seven rich nations has agreed to call for reducing gas consumption and increasing electricity from renewable sources while phasing out fossil fuels faster and building no new coal-fired power plants. Why is there such a rush? Have you ever thought about it? A very common answer that you will often hear from these green energy supporters is that green energy is part of the solution to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius. It will provide new jobs and energy at a potentially lower cost and other benefits. So this is the classic answer that you will get to hear. But what they don't really tell you is that the material that are needed for many green energy technologies are rare earth materials. Let me name few of them. Please pause the video and read them. So to extract these rare earth materials, again you will need heavy machines that use fossil fuel. That is one point. Second, extracting these rare earth materials is going to cause a lot of pollution. This means how to excavate massive quantities of rock just to obtain few grams of these materials. The third point is that the manufacturing process of these devices is very energy intensive. Fourth point, when these technologies and devices are connected to the power grid, they tend to generate more power during low demand periods rather than high demand periods. The same thing you can see with lithium ion batteries. Everyone is so crazy about the EV industry. The governments are pushing the EV idea so much, as if it is going to solve all the problems. First of all, these batteries are so expensive, and the extraction of lithium causes heavy environmental pollution. Do you think the government cares about the environment? I mean, just think about it. To extract oil or natural gas, all you have to do is drill deep holes in the Earth's crust. But to extract lithium, you have to basically blow up massive portions of land to mine hard rocks. And the second way to extract lithium, that is brine extraction, which involves massive underground water wastage. Even then, you need to plug your electric cars into your home circuit, which again gets electricity from a nuclear or thermal power plant. So I really don't know why people say it's green and completely clean. And let me tell you something about nuclear power. Do you know nuclear power is actually very clean, safe and reliable energy? Yes, it is safe. Modern nuclear power plants are designed with multiple layers of safety features to minimize the risk of accidents and disaster. After so many years of research, countries have actually mastered the design. Now, nuclear power plants also generate radioactive waste, but then with careful management and disposable system, it does not pose a threat to the environment or public health. Safe storage and disposable of nuclear waste over the long term remains a significant challenge, but even that can be solved and looked into. As for reliability, nuclear power plants are capable of producing electricity consistently at a high rate. Even then, of course, there has been disasters like Fukushima and Chernobyl. But then it is important to note that those incidents were caused by inherent faults in the reactors, which have been extensively studied and addressed by experts over the years to improve nuclear safety measures. So I am again repeating, nuclear power is actually a very clean, safe and reliable energy. But you very well know that it will never be considered as green energy. Do you know why? Because green does not mean what you think. Green is a political color just like red, blue, yellow, purple and black. Green simply does not mean the color of the environment. Although it is one of the elements, from a political point of view, green ideology is all about local control, local responsibility, distributed production, decentralization, self-sustenance. And if you look at the opposite of all these points, you will realize that green ideology opposes dependency, centralization, corporate control, corporate ownership, and concentrated production. In short, green ideology opposes big business. And if you look at nuclear power, only two entities can run and operate nuclear power plants. One, it is the government, and the second one is big corporation that has a lot of money. That's it, we do not have any other option. If you see someone who has a lot of money, only they can run nuclear power reactors. It's plain and simple. If you want the government to run nuclear power plants, even their corruption can take place. So one should be fine with even letting a private corporation produce energy as long as it works. Because we often accuse corporations of stealing our money, increasing the rates and corruption. The same accusation can also be applicable to government run power plants. Corporate run power plants are often more efficient and productive compared to government run facilities, which may suffer from bureaucratic inefficiencies, political interference, favoritism, corruption and other issues that we see in a socialist country. That is the reason nuclear power is never going to be part of green energy. Green ideology is against big business. 
Hence, it is often observed that green lobby support solar and wind energy as alternatives. And it is because they don't want big businesses to run the energy industry. If you have ever observed, solar energy setups can be done on a decentralized small scale manner like rooftop solar panels or a wind farm. The whole reason why solar and wind is so commonly accepted is due to ideology, the ideology of independency and not the environment. That is the reason Germany has permanently phased out the nuclear reactors, because the green lobby is very strongly anti-big businesses. As far as coal and gas-based thermal power plants are concerned, that will go on for some more time depending on how aggressively the green lobby pressurizes the German government. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.